just briefly, alternative water supplies, again, it's you're using reclaimed water to offset your groundwater use, your stormwater harvesting, surface water. These are just, you're going to use that source instead of groundwater to, to, to supply your water needs in order to, to help the resource. As far as water storage, these are projects where, where you want to get rehydrate those wetlands. Uh, this is the Mallory Swamp Project. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was, the, the original intent was not for we're doing that for recharge. It was to rehydrate those 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 wetlands and and uh, do a little flood mitigation. And I'm not the, the expert on the on this project, but that's the that's what I understand. Now, what we're here to talk about the the upper floor not for regional recharge concepts update. This is the Atkins project. They have finalized their first technical memorandum. And this is a little bit of a summary on what, what we found so far. And this is a sort of a phased approach. So we're, we're getting first step, second step. We're, we're done with that first step. And the region that we're looking at, the, the, the area, the study area is this area, this, this red line. Okay. And we just, this yellow line is sort of a freehand drawing of this is the area that we're looking at as far as what we're, where we would do a project. Why is the red line there? Why is it not include our whole district? The red, the red line is there. Well, uh, let me take that, the, the first step of that. The red line is there because that's the whole study area. <coughs> that, that is where we would get any sources of water from. And you can't, we're not gonna, if you just look inside this yellow circle, you're not gonna find any needs. No, but I, why don't we go further to the west? Because the Suwannee River is a hydraulic barrier, number one. That's a, there's a hydrologic barrier in the Suwannee River. Any impact, we're, we're dealing with this as an impact, as potential cross-boundary impacts of another district. We don't want to get St. John's District involved in, in other areas of our district where they wouldn't have a potential impact. And yeah, we I, deal with that in our work class system. I, I understand when we originally approved the Atkins contract, it would take care, it would just strip our district look at all our needs for the whole district. And now I'm kind of disappointed that just worrying about the eastern portion of our district. Well, when we went to, to get our funding partners, then we, we had to kind of do a little the negotiation there on, we're looking at two projects in St. John's and we're looking at two projects in, in the Swan. Well, we have no, no studies going on for the western part of our district. Not in particular. We haven't, we haven't seen any areas in the western part of the district other than what we've seen in Jefferson mm -hmm. County that may be a potential area that, that we see a, a, where we need, in, in the planning region, the next 20-year 20, 20 planning uh, horizon that we really have any issues. So that's, uh, we're, not, we're not, not concerned about it just yet. That's, it. that's also part of Madison, too, in the northwest quarter. Yeah. It's impacting that. It's the northeast and Jefferson, northwest. The focus of the first technical memo was to summarize, and it did summarize, accumulated hydrologic and hydrogeologic data, identified regulatory and water treatment requirements, and also identified those water treatment processes for the ranges of those surface water and reclaimed water qualities and those sources that are available look at the water quality and see what it's going to take to treat that water to whatever standard we think it's going to need to be treated to before we use it as a source. Those potential water sources that have come up so far are the Upper Swanee, the St. Mary's, Ocklawaha, St. John's River, Black Creek, and various potential reclaimed water sources. <coughs> those reclaimed water sources with, with the limitation in the the, instead of looking at every single little small reclaimed water source, we said anything over 10 million gallons a day would be a potential source because of the, the cost benefit. You don't want to, uh, it's going to cost a lot of money to develop a project. You want to maybe get, get the best bang for your buck. The trigger requirements and processes that were involved, <coughs> that were evaluated, and there are, there are regulatory and treatment requirements for direct aquifer recharge. This is such as aquifer <coughs> wells. We're going to drill a well and we're going to just put that water right into the aquifer. Well, what's going to be involved in that? That's going to be probably the most difficult to permit 
use under existing regulations because they're really strict about about what type of water you put in the ground, and as well as they should be. The uh, surface water must meet primary and <coughs> secondary drinking water standards. So there is there is treatment issues before we do any direct aquifer recharge. Is that? TDS or a total of solids of greater than 10,000 parts per million, I think, in the bale. If that's that's how they were permitting the original or the, the ASR wells, the active storage and recovery wells that, that were in the state, you had to go into a real a non drinking water aquifer. So they, this is actually would be putting water into the aquifer, and that, that, the drinking water aquifer. So there's going to be some pretty strict standards on that if they if it, if it's being allowed. But did I misunderstand? You said there are less stringent if you just go deeper to the lower. If you go into the, the higher or the non-drinking water, if you yeah. have a if you have a, a TDS of higher than ten thousand parts per million, then there are, are less stringent regulations. They're not real keen on it these days, but but it, it's probably more. They are they even doing that? I mean, uh, putting any recharged water into the drinking water aquifer anywhere in the state now? Direct aquifer recharge. There's two. There's two types of recharge. You got direct aquifer recharge and indirect. The indirect would be going through uh, infiltration basins, ribs, rapid infiltration basins, reservoirs, sinkholes, wetlands, or storage ponds, something like that, where you're not directly putting in the aquifer, but it does ultimately get into the aquifer. A uh, little diagram kind of showing a uh, just a basic uh, design of a rapid infiltration basin. Now, surface water, there are, there are no specific treatment regulations. However, DEP does reserve the right, of course, to uh, review on a case-by-case -case basis to see if there's anything we might need to do uh, for treatment of surface water before we put it into uh, indirect recharge. Reclaimed water are more restrictive than uh, the surface water, but it could be achieved, and we're, we're going to do a little bit more research on that in the past, too. Next steps, uh, conceptual design for the four regional recharge concepts project <coughs> and looking at the recharge benefit assessed using the district's groundwater model. Stormwater would be that with which category would that fall in? Stormwater would fall in surface or recharge or reclaim in that previous slide. This is this is the all of the, the whole of North Florida. This that is where kind of falls underneath this umbrella of what we're doing for, for all of our recharge concepts that we're trying to come up with in North Florida. Now it's this is a, a St. John's initiative that's mainly focused in the in the Keystone Heights area. 